Now, I'm going to go over some games played by the sixth, I believe it was, official world chess champion, um, Max Oeva from the Netherlands. Now, he was a world champion who is not very prominently known. He was a world champion for a very brief period of time from 1935 to 1937. He, um, he beat the defending world champion, Alexander Aliekin, in a match, 15.5 to 14.5, in a 30-game match played across many cities in the Netherlands in 1935. More impressively, um, in the match, it started off with a win for Aliekin, win for Oiva, win for Aliekin, and um, at some point, I think it was 5-2, to two, if I'm not mistaken, with several draws, but Oiva would go on then to win, win most of the rest of the games um, out of the decisive games that were left, and he did win the match 15-14 to become the world champion. Now, in the rematch... Um, in 1937, Alexander Aliakin would beat him uh, by a very whopping and convincing score of, I believe, it was 14 and a half to nine and a half. And um, so that that was his tenure as world champion was very short, but he was nonetheless um, nonetheless he was the world champion. So it's d4, d5. C4, D takes C4, Knight F3, Knight F6, E3, E6. Now, this was a game, of course, between Max Oiva and Alexander Aliekin, played in Germany in 1937. All right. So, Bishop takes C4. This was the Queen's Gambit accepted. C5 castles, pawn to A6. All pretty standard. All has been played many times. Queen E2. Now, here Aliakin plays B5. Even by modern day standards, this is still a very well known variation with Bishop B3, Bishop B7. Now, a4 is played here by Max Oiva, and Alexander Eliakin plays knight bd7. And the first question you're probably wondering here is, why does Oiva play rook d1 instead of trading the pawns on b5? Problem with trading the pawns on b5 here is that if you trade the pawns and play rook takes a8 after, after queen takes a8, you might think, oh, look, there's some free juicers all over the board. But if you take on b5 here, black can play. I think there are a couple ways to play this. I'll let the computer think for a bit, but I'm pretty sure that takes takes and queen f3 is correct and your your king is kind of a little bit open mind you it's not so bad for white because again black is also lacking in development with the bishop the, the king the bishop and the rook um being undeveloped as well but that being said white does not have the advantage and normally when you have the white piece in the game of chess you want to try to put pressure on your opponent you try, want to try to defeat them um so therefore ali i can or not ali i can sorry oiva goes rook d1 ali i can plays bishop e7 oiva takes ali i can castles um, Oiva plays bishop c2. Again, these moves are not necessarily all the best moves, but it does show one critical point, which is that even in the 1930s, players already understood the, the concept of initiative and giving up material to get an initiative. So specifically, white is up a pawn here, and white potentially could even be up two pawns at some point, but the pawn on c5 is weak, and the diagonal towards g2 can also become very weak. So bishop c2, Aliakin takes... Oiva plays knight e5. Now, again, you're probably wondering in this position, it's like, what's the big deal? Computer says, as you see from the evaluation, computer says black is better. Um, and so how on earth did Oiva win this? It looks so dry. White has no development. These three pieces on their original squares. Um, you're about to trade some knights. It looks like black has some very nice diagonals. Easy rook play in the center of the board. So here, Aliakin plays b4, which is kind of the start of going wrong. Um, what Aliakin should have played here was queen to c7. And after knight takes d7, knight takes d7, no reason to be afeard of bishop takes h7, because after king takes h7, queen d3, king to g8, queen takes d7. There's a very nasty move, rook f to d8 here. And now the problem for white is that you're going to get ice skater on the back rank here. Because if you take the queen, there's rook takes rook. Obviously, if you leave the queen here, I capture it. Or if you move it back, I'm going to capture it um, on any square with my rook on d8. So, so Aliakin should have played queen c7. Probably he was afraid of certain ideas like takes. Or I, I, maybe he was worried about queen d3. Not really clear, but he was worried about something. Um, so b4 is played here. So knight takes d7. Knight takes d7. Oiva goes knight d2. Now, the one thing to note is in this position, again, white still is lacking in development. The bishop and the rook are not developed. However, there are ideas like knight to b3 and then eventual development of the bishop and the rook to c1, which after which white will be doing reasonably well. So f5 is played here. So now knight to b3 is played by Oiva. Bishop to d5 played by Aliakin to close the d-file from the white rook because white was threatening, potentially, to play knight takes bishop. And if you were to take back, you lose your queen on d8. So therefore, uh, f5, knight, b3, bishop, d5 is played here to close the diagonal. Oiva goes knight, d4. Aliakin takes. 
b3, and now bishop to d3 is played here. And what you end up here is, um, or not what you what you end up with, but what you see here is that it looks like a pretty standard position, very slow opening, not a lot going on. Um, but white has a very clear cut idea of what what white of what to do here. So knight b8 is played by Aliakin. Again, the knight on d7 is not great. He tries to reroute to c6, but this actually turns out to be one of the fatal fatal mistakes. Um, of this game because after knight b8 bishop to c4 is played aliakin goes knight to c6 here and now rook to d2 and what you'll notice here is you still probably think well look the bishop on c1 rook on a1 undeveloped grandmaster hikaru he's told us develop all your pieces castle king develop all your pieces so what is a world champion like max oiva doing here um you know not developing the rook not developing the bishop and black of course is very easy rook, rook maneuvers into the center of the board but what happens here is that it's actually much better for white because what's going to happen is this bishop and this rook are going to come into the game very, very quickly. Well, black has kind of made a lot of weaknesses. He pushed the pawn to f5. He also has overextended this b pawn down to b3. And it's going to be very hard to defend the pawns. So queen b6 is played here. Why not take the bishop where? After knight c6? Uh, if you were to take the bishop here, black can actually capture your rook. And you can't take the pawn because the knight guards it and knight guards both pawns. But additionally, the knight attacks the queen. So you're going to have to take the knight. And after queen takes bishop, you have a rook and a bishop. And black has two rooks here. Um, so rook to d2 is played here. Aliakin plays queen b6. Oiva goes bishop takes bishop. Pawn takes. And now he plays rook takes pawn. Knight b4. And now a really, really important move. The best move in the position, which is rook to d1. And the reason that this is so good, um, as we'll see shortly, is that white has a has a much better bishop on c1 than the black knight on b4 because the bishop is going to get to a very critical square and it will control a very critical diagonal in a couple of moves so knight to c2 is played here why don't you trade the bishop as black that's also a question if you were to trade here white takes back now you have many problems you have three things under attack and you can't guard all three of them here um so that's the main reason he didn't trade so here Rook d1, knight c2, rook b1, only move to save the rook. Queen to c6, attacking the pawn on a4. So now white goes bishop to d2, queen takes a4, bishop to c3. And so we've reached a middle game position where you think, well, I mean, it's even material, both sides have the same number of pawns. But there is one thing, and when, eventually when I get to Bobby Fischer's games, we'll probably go through games that are very similar to this in a way, um, where you see that the bishop on c3 is much better than the knight on c2. And the reason for that is the knight is kind of stuck. It looks very pretty. It's it's uh, it's 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 a um, it's a bastion here. The pawn on b3 guards the knight, but the knight can't go anywhere really. The only square the knight can go to is b4. These two squares are covered. This square is covered. This square is a capture. This square is a capture. So the knight looks really really good, but it's actually not doing anything at all on c2. So now queen b5 is played here. Oiva goes queen f3, rook a d8, and now Oiva plays queen g3. Important move again lining up the classic diagonal the battery and the right triangle as well all in one rook d7 is played here by aliakin to guard the pawn from the checkmate and of course the queen guards the rook so rook d6 is played here of course um aliakin plays rook f7 he do not take the rook because then i ignore your rook and i create the checkmate so rook f7 is played here and now oiva plays rook b to d1 and Aliakin blunders here. He plays pawn to f4. Again, the position is very, very difficult to play here because if you play a move like pawn to h6, for example, uh, white can go queen to g6, and you're really in Zugzwang here. You have to deal with the fact that white is threatening to take on g7. You've dealt with the back rank checkmate ideas with rook d8. Um, and also, again, your knight on c2 is doing absolutely nothing here. It's just, it's off, uh, it's, it's out at the stable, um, enjoying life. So Aliakin plays f4. Pawn takes pawn, a5, and now Oiva plays f5. Another extremely good move here, by the way, because you create a, um, a checkmating pattern threat here. So if, let's say black takes on f5. You can now go rook takes rook, rook takes rook. I believe it's queen b8 or is it rook d7? I think both orders work, but let's let for, for continuity, white just trades the rooks. And now you go queen b8, king f7. You take the pawn with a check. And now if black blocks, you just take the knight because your bishop covers the e1 square. And if black moves the king, you take the knight and the queen covers against the ice skater on d1 as well. So f5 is a very, very powerful move to create this classic idea um, of queen to b8 down the road. So Aliakin plays a4. 
Idea being that, again, two reasons. First of all, it stops this idea down the road of queen b8 takes b3 because the pawn supports. And secondly, the other idea is to play a3 and try to create a pass pawn. I mean, you have two pawns here. The only way that you're going to save the game is if you can somehow create counterplay with these pawns on the queen side because obviously you're completely lost over here on the king side. Um, so a4 is played here. Now f6 is played here by Oiva. Aliakin plays g6. Oiva goes h4. Aliakin trades the rooks. Now again, if you play a3, the same, same problem exists, which is white can trade the rooks. And you go check, king f7, queen b3. Same problem, and you lose the game. Um, so Aliakin trades. Oiva takes with the queen. Aliakin plays h5. And Oiva plays queen e6. A very, very nice move here. Uh, and here Aliakin resigns in view of the fact that white can go rook to d8 check. And let's just say you go a3, rook d8 check, king h7. Queen takes rook check, king h6, and now rook to h8 is checkmate. Um, and if you play a move like, I guess, queen b8 here, uh, white can go rook to d7, queen to f8. And now you can even just play a very cute little move, rook to e7. Idea to play rook e8 and collect material. If you move the king, you lose the rook. So you can't move the king. You can't move the rooks to the pin. Um, and you can't move the queen because you get checkmated. So you can go like a3, but after takes, knight a3, rook e8, you just lose the queen. And with it, you lose the game. So a very impressive game played by uh, played by Max Oiva against Alexander Aliakin, the, the world champion at this time. Um, very, very good game. And you kind of see the power. It seems like a very innocuous kind of simple opening. Nothing much is happening. And then just these little inaccuracies by Aliakin. f5, for example... Um, and then I would say also this b3 inaccuracy as well. And just these, this is this is one of the hardest things in chess is when you push these pawns, it seems very harmless just de developing, um, maybe not developing, but controlling some space. But in fact, it, pushing pawns creates weaknesses. And long term, um, pawns can never go backwards. So by pushing these pawns, you always make a commitment um, and you really have to be sure that you're not. it's not going to cost you later on. Um so very, very nice game here played by Max Oiva. This is the first game I wanted to go, go over um, of his. As you see, very, very impressive. And uh, it's very reminiscent in some ways of what you see with some of the later world champions like Anatoly Karpov and also players like Magnus Carlsen, where you see them play very positionally. It seems like nothing much is happening, but some slight inaccuracies, and then you pounce. 